are accused of being too serious. How do you plead? Here are 10 banned candies that can kill. Part four, because no matter how tasty candy might be, it should never be deadly. Exploding gum. An explosion of flavor! How many times did you freak out as a kid because you swallowed a piece of gum and thought you were going to die? Yeah, thanks, urban legends. While chewing and swallowing regular chewing gum will most likely have no deadly consequences, there was one chewing incident back in 2009 that attracted a lot of attention and had a fatal outcome. A 25-year-old Ukrainian chemistry student had big dreams of becoming a scientist and decided to experiment with various chemicals during his Christmas break. Yes, science! He found that by dipping his favorite stick of gum in citric acid before chewing, it enhanced the gum's sourness, as well as prolonged its taste. However, one night, Vladimir dipped it in the wrong bowl, a fatal mistake that would cost him his life. Instead of dipping it in the citric acid, he dipped it in an unidentified chemical, possibly an explosive. After only one chew, the gum exploded in his mouth, killing him instantly. Piece of gum? Uh, no. No, thank you. Yikes. The things people do for science. Roadkill gummy candy. Nutty bars, bazooka, pez, smarties, pringles. With so many different types of gummy candies available, it can sometimes be hard to stand out from the crowd. Maybe that's why back in 2005, Kraft thought it would be a good idea to go off book and come up with some highly controversial candy. The bag of roadkill gummy sweets featured all kinds of colorful animals like snakes, squirrels, and even chickens that had been, well, roadkilled. They even had tire marks on them, just to add a little realism. While these gummies were supposed to be a harmless, tasty snack, they struck a sensitive chord with animal activists and it eventually led to their demise. Apparently, roadkill gummy candies were promoting the idea of injuring animals and was sending the wrong message, especially from a so-called wholesome corporation like Kraft, at least according to numerous campaigns that followed the release of the candy. Golly. Activists were claiming that representing critters run over by cars as a fun treat would encourage children to be cruel to animals. Kraft ended up stopping production of the fruit-flavored critters that same year. Candy cigarettes. If you want to grow up fast, take one of these. <laughs> This one doesn't need a lot of explanation as to why they were banned and why they could possibly kill you. Candy cigarettes were sold practically everywhere at one point and were modeled after grown-up cigarettes. Real-life cigarette manufacturers even helped with the production of the candy using the same exact branding on the packaging. You know, just to make things even more authentic. They were made of either chalky sugar, bubblegum, or chocolate and wrapped in paper. The cream of the crop, though, were the ones with the powdered sugar at the tip. You could blow through the candy stick and make it look like you were blowing smoke. Yeah, well, who is this for exactly? Like, are we teaching kids how to smoke? Well, I know, that's, that's the thing. With almost identical packaging and branding, candy cigarettes were the perfect way for kids to mirror exactly what their parents were doing. Studies have even shown that the percentage of smokers who had candy cigarettes as a child was higher than those who didn't smoke. As medical organizations around the world became more aware of the dangers of smoking, many countries like Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Ireland, Brazil, Norway, and Finland decided to ban the candy, while the U.S. simply changed the label to candy sticks. Yo, man, you got a cigarette? Kinder Surprise. You just blew the best thing you had going for you. You just blew the element of surprise. <clears throat> this candy is the definition of a controversy. Some will claim to still see Kinder Surprise eggs in stores, and while it might be accurate, the truth is there aren't supposed to be any. Indeed, the fun, tasty treat has been banned in the United States for quite a while now. The little toy found inside the chocolate can apparently be confused by some kids as another candy, increasing the risk of choking. Even if banning the candy might seem a little overboard, incidents have actually happened in the past. Hey, I almost choke it again. <laughs> Isn't there a first aid chart around here somewhere? Like in 2016, when a three-year-old in France died after choking on a toy from the chocolate egg. 
Yes, the eggs do bear a warning stating that the toys are not suitable for children under three years due to the presence of small parts, but that didn't stop the treat from getting kicked out of the country. To avoid any confusion, Kinder did come up with another type of chocolate egg with a toy, Kinder Joy, only packaged differently. One half of the egg contains the candy, a sweet cream topped with cocoa wafer bites, and the other half holds the toy. This hasn't slowed down the egg hunt, however, as over 60,000 smuggled eggs were seized by U.S. border officials in 2011 alone. So yeah, you might see some in stores, but just know, you probably shouldn't. Kinder Joy is two surprises in one. Tamarind lollipops. What we call cavities on a stick. We're all for eating candy from around the world, and Mexican candy makers sure make some sweet treats. However, some of those candies haven't always been so fault-free. Tamarind lollipops, for instance, the soft dark brown tamarind fruit candy on a white or orange striped stick, were banned from the U.S. market back in 2001 after they were found to contain excessively high levels of lead by the California Department of Health Services. Ow! What the? The threat was mostly from the imported tamarind candy labeled under the Dulmex brand Bolorindo and was found to pose a significant health risk. The investigation began after a two-year-old child from Orange County was found with very high levels of lead in his system following a routine blood test. The culprit? The child had eaten the lollipops in question prior to his visit. There were also two other cases of lead poisoning associated with tamarind lollipops found in Stanislaus County, which led to the candy being banned, at least until the poisoning problem could be controlled. Lead poisoning will damage the central nervous system and can cause severe learning and behavioral disorders. While the candy itself contained about 0.2 parts per million of lead, it wasn't the only problem. Oh, whose side are you on? The candy wrappers, something children will often lick or chew, had 21,000 to 22,000 parts per million of lead, while the sticks contained about 400 parts per million. Hippy Sippy. Just took it to my veins! As a child, we all loved to play pretend. Pretend family, pretend school, pretend anything, really. But as a parent, it seemed like hippie sippies were taking the pretend game a little too far, and it's pretty easy to see why. How do you do, fellow kids? What? The rather edgy and experimental candy was made in 1968 and imported from Japan by R.J. Albert & Sons. This candy basically proves that just about anything could be put on the market back in those days. The confection was meant to replicate the hippie culture, only in a supposed kid-friendly manner. The plastic toy was filled with multicolored pellets meant to represent uppers and downers. Nancy's too smart to put that in her body. It's only for losers. Modeled after a hypodermic needle, kids needed to suck on the needle in order to get the candy. Still kid-friendly? Obviously, parents weren't so happy about their kids pretending to take illicit substances, and glamorizing it in the form of a candy was said to be enticing and could lead to future drug use. Hippy Sippy, thankfully, only stayed on the shelves for less than a year. But if you do some digging around online, you might still be able to get your hands on one. Or you could always just say no. Lollipop. Give me all your candy and gum! Who are you and why do you want our candy? Okay, while this candy was technically never meant to be sold to children, the fact is, it's still candy, and kids love candy, meaning it was only a matter of time before a little rascal stumbled upon one. Lollipop is yet another candy that was accused of glamorizing illicit substances, only this time, the point was a little more blatant. It was an edible candy that resembled a smoking pipe, you know, the kind some grown-ups like to use to smoke their greens. It was released in the late 2000s and was targeted to a adult smokers who wanted to add a little bit of sugar to their routine. The candy pipe used to be sold exclusively online and required a valid ID of 18 years or older to purchase, but it wasn't long before they ended up in retail stores across the country. It was from that moment on that things started to get a bit more touchy. Hey kid, get in my van and I'll give you some candy. Oh no, my mom says I shouldn't. Even though lollipops were not intended for children, they did come in a wide range of colors, had an interesting shape, and were made of candy. So, of course, it couldn't keep curious kids from being intrigued. Parents grew concerned about all the questions their kids began asking about the strange candy and eventually complained to the company, claiming lollipops were promoting bad habits to young people. 
After a while, the inappropriate candy was taken off the shelves and relegated to the online-only market. Come out peacefully so we can smash your drug mill and all your worldly possessions. Lucas Mexican Candy. Get that out of my face! Lucas Mexican Candy offers a wide variety of candy, and back when it was first introduced, they were one of the most in-demand products from Latin America. However, this also came with a fair share of controversy, leading to their banishment. Lucas Candy was a unique powdered candy blending saltiness, sourness, and sweetness that was typically poured on fruit to make the flavor pop. It came in a container that looked like a spice shaker, making it easy to sprinkle the candy wherever you wanted. But that wasn't necessarily a good thing. No, I don't think we should. Are you a Mexican or a Mexicant? A lot of times, instead of being poured on fruit, Lucas Candy would be shaken onto the table, arranged into a line, and then sniffed. Again, not exactly the most kid-friendly candy out there. As snorting the candy became more and more frequent, worried parents complained to the company. The company's response? This was merely the result of using the product wrong. That explanation might have flown if it wasn't for test results proving that the candy contained twice the amount of lead allowable by the FDA. No, 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 no. You might still be able to find some around today, despite the candy being banned, but just don't forget what it really contains. Toxic Waste Chew Bar Well, sir, where should we dump this batch? The playground? With a name like Toxic Waste, it can't really be that much of a surprise to learn that this was the opposite of healthy. In fact, it totally lived up to its name when the chew bar was found to be actually toxic. The Toxic Waste Chew Bar was a candy imported from Pakistan, launched in 2007, known for its extreme and unmatched sourness. It was wrapped in bright yellow caution-like tape, which already should have given you enough reason to steer clear of it. Heck, even the company's website had the screech of a blaring warning horn. And if that's not alarming enough, then what is? Great delicious. Scrub did terrific. Fine and dandy, dandy like sour, sour candy. candy. However, it wasn't until 2011 that the clearly dangerous candy started gaining attention from the California Department of Public Health. Once they ran some tests, they found that a majority of the chew bars contained a significant amount of lead, almost three times the accepted level by the FDA. Even though no one had gotten sick from the candy yet, the U.S. distributor decided to recall the bars before things got out of hand. Your face! That's so sour. <laughs> Maddie. Walter, you're not old enough for this. But I... Since elevated lead content could potentially be harmful to small children, infants, and pregnant people, the toxic waste chew bars were pulled from the shelves and banned for good. Better safe than sorry, right? Free candy. It was like taking candy from a baby. Why are you giving candy to a baby in the first place? Aside from Halloween, there aren't that many occasions where you can just go around asking for free candy from strangers, which, frankly, is kind of a bummer. In Madrid, however, most people would beg to differ, as giving away any free candy is now a banned practice. You see, most Spanish towns and cities will hold a Cabalgata de Reyes, which is a Christmas parade, every year on the 5th of January. At this most anticipated night of the year for the kids, the Three Kings, also known as the Three Wise Men, will arrive on floats with a bunch of presents and sweets. While this might seem like heaven on earth for just about any kid, this practice has also led to several injuries, as one might imagine with children scrambling around trying to get as much candy as they can. Are you okay? Mm. Woo -hoo -hoo! Sugar slam! But it's an incident that happened in 2013 that put a stop to the formerly loved tradition once and for all. The Christmas carriage ran over a six-year-old boy who was trying to collect the sweets in the streets and ended up killing him. After the tragic incident, new rules and regulations were put in place to prevent anything like that from happening again. And the candy. For instance, the three wise men are only allowed to gift children candy if the streets are equipped with appropriate security fencing. Stick around, just tap or click for more great videos. Leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.